The views and opinions expressed on the Middle Class VO podcast are solely those of the hosts and guests. Any feelings hurt therein are an unfortunate byproduct of the quest for infotainment. Also, please be reminded that concerted efforts have been made so as not to put anyone's knickers in a twist. Having one's knickers in a twist is not an objective or goal. However, if your knickers are in a twist and it persists for more than four hours, please seek out a physician. Moreover, if anyone were to feel besmirched by any of the commentary on the Middle Class VO podcast, it would be purely coincidental. No besmirchment is intended. Please enjoy. Coming up on the Middle Class VO podcast. When I start any kind of coaching with somebody that wants to get into it, I say the two main rules are always be yourself. Don't do a fake voice because we hear right through it. Fully understand the script. Don't make your read bigger than the words on the paper. And probably the most important thing is don't read it the way you think an automotive spot is supposed to sound. Read it by what the script has to say. If you need a learning word, just an email away. Corporate now. Tell us what to say Explain our video Imaging radio Slinging local cars Read an IVR No, we ain't no stars This is the Middle Class VO Podcast The Middle Class VO Podcast The Middle Class VO Podcast We are so excited to have one of the legends in the demo production world on the podcast with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazingly talented Cliff Zellman. Woo! Cliff, how are you? Da, 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 da. Hey, guys, thank you. I'm doing great. I am thrilled to be here. Awesome. Cliff Zellman, uh, if you don't know Cliff, Cliff is one of the best producers of demos, voiceover demos in the industry. He specializes in automotive, but n- not what, what everybody doesn't know is that he does fantastic commercial demos as well. And Cliff is an automotive producer in the day-to-day world. So he is producing all kinds of amazingly talented voice artists from across the country, and that's what he does regularly. And then he produces outstanding voiceover demos as well. And Cliff's background is a kind of interesting. It does lend itself well to what he does, but Cliff... Tell us about your history and your rock and roll background. Oh, my goodness. It's, am- it's amazing I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've seen I, the I pictures. Was... <laughs> You've seen pictures. That's why I'll never run for Congress. Never... Well, actually, I could probably get into Congress. Um, <laughs> I was walking home from school. I was maybe fourth or fifth grade, and I saw a, a, the neck of a guitar sticking out of a garbage can. And I pulled it out, and the back was like uh, some domestic dispute probably uh, caused this. And I took it home, and I duct taped it up, and my parents watched me as I did this and tried to get it all working, and I strung it up, and it was the strings were about four inches away from the fretboard, and they felt sorry for me. So they went out, bought me a guitar, and I started playing guitar, got into bands young, maybe about 12, 13 years old, I think was my first band. Wow. Uh, the drummer was playing on suitcases with uh, wooden soup spoons. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was cool. It had a sound, you know? Um, yeah. Then I was very fortunate. I got a, an independent record deal with a band when I was about 16 or 17. And uh, just fell in love with the studio. I was in L.A. I was born in L.A. Uh, For anybody that lives there, um, basically Van Nuys Boulevard in between Burbank and Magnolia, if you all know where that is. And fell in love with the studio. Got a job uh, right out of two years out of uh, college. And actually, I think it was concurrent. Yeah, because I remember doing homework while I was uh, sitting behind the board. And... um, for a while, I was vacuuming and cleaning toilets and taking out trash, and then I got a big promotion to the receptionist, and that was cool. Nice. So, we have a huge you look great prom- in a skirt. <laughs> yeah, I do, actually, uh, <laughs> especially in the 80s. You know, the 80s, I uh, had the big boof hair, hairdo and all that. Um, but that was a, a great opportunity, you know, because I got to meet every musician, every producer, um, every studio supplier for about a year. Um, then I went out on my own and got hooked up as an assistant engineer with a studio over on Witsit and Moore Park 
in Studio City and kind of took over and became chief engineer for about, I don't know, 13, 14 years. Um, the best of the best coming through the doors and the worst of the worst. And I was the house engineer. So I got can, to work I, with all I of them. Can I interject really quick? Some of sure. your credits. Uh, Cliff has worked on the uh, great movies, Born in East L.A. One of the great Pumpkin- ones, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. Oh, yes. <laughs> Death let's Spa. not forget the ever, uh, I, this might have been nominated for 17 Academies, but A Dangerous Place. Oh, my, I got a great story <laughs> about that, but I'll probably get sued if I, uh, if I talk about it over the years. But you forgot Death Spa. Oh, Death Spa. Now, Death Man. Spa was cool because, <laughs> because of two things. One, it was the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. And number two, I worked on it. So that, that's two huge events. Oh, it was awful. It was, uh, it was about a, a, a health club that was uh, possessed by a demon that was obviously built on sacred Indian burial ground, a, oh, a premise course. that we're all unfamiliar with. And uh, it was Star Body Health Spa, and Satan himself threw with his bolt of evil, and the, it became Death Spa. Welcome to the health club where you'll sweat blood. Never work without a spotter, Freddy. Wake falls on your chest and you can really get squashed. It's the place for a killer workout. Oh my gosh. Uh, where, where the, Not where the, the bolts equipment. of evil. Oh, it was, it was <laughs> unbelievable. They used chicken parts for, you know, like, when, <laughs> it was, it was oh. ugh. Yeah. So, yeah, it was not only the worst, but yes, I had the opportunity to work on it. So I feel very blessed. Absolutely fantastic, man. Thank you, sir. (laughs) I heard that you were like an electronics junkie. Well, yeah. When, you know... um, Tech, you know, musical, technical junkie. Yeah. Certainly not, uh, you know, ham radios or you know, heat kit stuff like that. But uh, right, yeah, I, I like to buy it out of the box. I like to take it out of the box and, and smell it. But uh, it's funny because in my studio, I can only have my electric guitars, uh, the solid bodies, because all of the hollow bodies resonate. Ah. And I was mixing something uh, the night before. I was recording. I'm doing some acoustic guitar work and. Guitars were behind me, and the next morning I came in and I started to edit something, and I kept hearing, ooh, 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 and I'm thinking, what? So I start dipping with filters, 200 hertz, 300 hertz. Like, what is this coming through this? And then I've stopped right at a transient, you know, loud point coming over the speakers, and behind me, ooh, all the guitars sang in, in beautiful, uh, wow. sympathetic frequencies. I had to pull them out. Yeah, so I can't have my acoustic guitar. So anybody that's got acoustic guitars in your studio when you're mixing, Take them out. That should confusing. give you an idea of just how detail oriented Cliff Zellman is. <laughs> oh, I think not only <laughs> when he is working on your demo, but when he's also teaching you in person. Which brings me to my next point. I will be working with Cliff at Voiceover Atlanta coming up in late March. Cliff, tell me the details. Oh, I'm getting more excited every day. I'm trying. I'm trying not to think about it. Um, Two days, we're going to be, Kevin and I are going to be working for three hours. Uh, If you read the description in there, it's a little bit uh, misleading. It says uh, that there's an hour of introduction. Well, that's not correct. That's within the first hour. There's uh, introduction. We're going to be doing a lot of reading. We're going to be doing, um, giving a lot of tips. Uh, Neat thing this year, Kevin is going to be with us. So we're going to have, you know, from the other side of the glass. So you will have from the microphone looking at the director's view as well as the director uh, yelling at the talent view. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about the 15 points of an automotive read because Kevin and Bobby, you guys know more than anybody that uh, automotive Mm -hmm. is is a different animal. There are ways to read. There are very recognizable patterns uh, to automotive and those that are unfamiliar with that uh, you know may be able to do a great read but when it comes to automotive if you don't hit these very specific points you know you end up on the left hand pile and and we definitely don't want to do that so kevin is going to be showing us uh exactly how to uh you know belt that stuff out as well as how to give us that sultry read as well and (laughs) now is it my imagination only because my entire world is surrounded by automotive but automotive is really starting to explode in the vo world 
it, it well, is. It we're really getting is. the recognition now, Cliff, yeah. is what I think. And, and thank goodness, because Bobby knows this story. When I first left radio to get into voiceover full time, it was the, my vehicle, pardon the pun, was automotive voice work. And Cliff, my thing at the time was, I'm going to do automotive, just keep the lights on and keep the business running. And then I'm going to be doing national trailers and national promos and stuff like that. At the time, I actually considered automotive like my dirty little secret, you know, yeah. not everybody <laughs> like knows. the world wrestling of the voiceover <laughs> world, right? Well, I called it the porn of the voiceover world. I really <laughs> oh did this at the time. That's but right, I, because my... you do it at 11 o'clock at night with really bright lights in the room, you know, so, <laughs> so everybody in the neighborhood knows something. See, I grew up in, in Sherman Oak, so I know all about it. Oh, that, so. there we go. There Anytime we go. there was a house with really bright lights at 2 o'clock in the morning, you'd, oh, there's yeah. something. They're filming in there, baby. <laughs> That's funny. But it, it's, you know... It, I think that, you know, it's really true. You hit on the fact that it's the recognition. And, you know, is it art? Yeah, you bet it is. You know, um, is it difficult? Sure it is. Um, and it, it's just, it's a grind just like any other genre of VO. You've got to audition. you got to have all your ducks in a row. you got to know what you're doing. You have to have a, an automotive persona. Uh, you have to be pretty well known. Uh, around uh, as an automotive voice to your agents. A lot of times people get into automotive. Don't tell their agents they do automotive. They say, oh my, holy cow, you know, include me in that, uh, in that roster. Um, but it's really the uh, consistency and the loyalty that dealerships uh, have with their voices. And uh, I'm telling people now that, you know, when you hit up a, a dealership, also include an on-hold sample include a directory mm. sample and include a thank you for purchasing your new vehicle. And did you know that maintenance is a very important part of your, so if you, you know, when you're hitting up the automotive agencies and the, uh, the dealerships, you know, come in with the full package and it's, it's a really neat thing. You know, all the problems are solved. You know, we like to go to our clients and not say, Hey, what can we do for you? I don't want you to have to think, you know, uh, you walk in and say, hey, this is what I can do for you. And, you know, automotive is, these guys are pretty hardcore. You know, they want to be told what to do. You had mentioned that um, it's finally getting the recognition it's deserved. Well, ACM definitely has noticed it, and they decided to bring you on board with them. So you're now, what is your official title? Are you considered an agent? ACM. Now, that sounds familiar. <laughs> guys i have been in vo heaven since january 1st oh it's it's wonderful it's like walking into a candy store i i guess my, my official title would be director of talent development automotive division and i definitely want to stress the automotive division because there are other extremely talented and very worthy people within acm that are also uh, talent development and i'm not the umbrella i'm just the automotive end so uh you know i want uh, i don't want to get any credit that i don't deserve although i think being asked to uh, jump into that role is, is pretty bitching can i say that oh, you can yeah, say it. we're glad you're there <laughs> okay <laughs> so my role really is to get uh those that are interested to presentation level um i got a lot of uh spots from people um uh, a notice was sent out, hey, we're starting the automotive, send us, you know, stuff that you've done. Do you do automotive? And uh, I guess, you know, we jump when you get an opportunity. So uh, a lot of the great talent that I'm sifting through has some spots, but nothing really that, that can be used as a presentation to show the six different sides, you know, of the talent of personalities, stuck in traffic, happy, uh, questioning, you know, all the, all the things that we go through every day, um, the real uh, stuff. And, um, yeah, the thoughts are good to know that, uh, you know, the demos are, are getting recognition and, and, uh, getting used for representation. So, yay. Cliff, we did a, uh, a podcast a few months ago talking about the automotive industry. And, you know, you commented on Facebook because you could hear Bobby and I's passion within that podcast. And we, we break th things down from the perspective of a voice actor. And why don't you tell us from the producer side and the director side what few two, three, four, five things, what makes for a good automotive talent voice actor? Okay, good, good question. Um, let's before we talk about one 
voice talent, let's talk about the different kinds of automotive ads that there are. And it's really pretty equal to just about any kind of commercial. Um, only thing about automotive is we're talking about four tires and a steering wheel. With a sultry luxury read, it's really connection to the script. It's not overdoing it. When I start any kind of coaching with somebody that wants to get into it, I say the two main rules are always be yourself. Don't do a fake voice because we hear right through it. Fully understand the script. Don't make your read bigger than the words on the paper. And probably the most important thing is don't read it the way you think an automotive spot is supposed to sound. Read it by what the script has to say. All the clues are there. You know, you look at a script, if you got six exclamation points at the end of a sentence, you know it's probably pretty hard sell. <laughs> Although I, I don't know the difference between six or two exclamation points myself. But, uh, you know, you, you can see a lot of capital letters, you know, bolded things, underlined, italicized. Plenty of clues you can get, but I think really connection, you know, I mean, that that's really no secret. That's something that's pretty, pretty overall in voiceover. You really got to connect to the script. Uh, don't sound like you're reading. Don't break in the middle of a sentence. One of my pet peeves, if you break while you're reading in the middle of a sentence, even if you think it's for dramatic purposes, I mean, it's a car spot. Um you want to sound like an expert. You want to sound like what you are talking about. You know exactly what you're talking about. If you're representing a dealership, you have to share the enthusiasm that the dealership has. Um, what else? Um, conversational, you know, we're not really doing that many more than we were a couple of years ago. The I'm a dad spots, um, you know, still big, but they're really more representative of the vehicle when you go on vacation, when you take your family rather than when I take my family, um, although still very popular. Let me see what else really, I guess connection and keeping a real voice. I think that's really important when people try to put on, you know, the Sunday, Sunday voice, it, it, it doesn't work, <laughs> you know, stay within your wheelhouse. And if you are auditioning for, uh, let's say hard sell, although I don't even really use that term, uh, I, I try to use like really energetic rather than hard sell. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. You know, it just gives you a different mindset. You think hard sell, you think, you know, be there and energetic. Hey, I'm really excited about this thing. Um, you know, any voice can do it. Um, younger voices, millennial voices are really big right now, entry level vehicles. But they're all, there will always be the Sunday, Sunday spots, you know, uh, dealerships like them. They're, get superstitious you know um so uh, those of you out there that are doing those hard sell spots that actually have that voice uh you guys are definitely blessed i get phone calls from people hey cliff how are you doing and that's <laughs> that's the way the guy sounds you know <laughs> oh, i'm doing great steve how are you oh terrific <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, i can't do that gosh. too long um but yeah exactly uh, is that a is that a, a kind of a, a good Answer, I guess, really connection and knowing what you're saying and knowing the 15 points of an automotive read. Perfect. A penny for your thoughts. So, Cliff, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I want you to be totally honest. Oh, and my if goodness. <laughs> if your viewpoint has changed on it, tell us. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's been about a year, maybe two ago, that on... Uh, Facebook, I think it was, or one of the uh, the pages there, you had mentioned that you wouldn't work with talent who were on certain play uh, to pays, pay to plays. Do you still feel that way, and why? I, you know, there are so many things on Facebook, uh, VO groups, and I'm not going to name any of them, but people showing, you know, giving off demos that for five bucks, for ten bucks. Um, I typed in $5, period. Is that all you're worth? And this was an honest question. I wouldn't say that's mm -hmm. all you're worth. I just said, is that all you're worth? And I just got ripped. And, and some of our buddies jumped in and said, oh, 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 you don't know who you're talking to. Be nice to this guy. Uh, <laughs> so you know what? I Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anybody that's going to sell their stuff for five bucks, I'm not interested. 
I'd rather. So you're uh, talking about the lower, the, yeah, the I mean, ones that will, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't say straight across the board because I can name a couple right now that I love that I think are terrific. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really the low ballers. It's and you know what? We don't have to. We don't have to deal with them. Um, you know, their, their time will come or not. You know, it's a it's a cliche. I know the cream rises to the top, but you know what, Bobby? How long you been doing this, Kevin? How long you been doing this, Cliff? Mm-hmm. We got combined 120 years experience probably doing this stuff. Um, I'm not interested in the phenomenon that's going on right now, where it's those seeking instant gratification, fueled by those that want instant credibility. Ooh, Cliff, that's nasty and controversial, but it's really not, you know. Um, the talent, the the grasp of the industry, the respect of yourself and the respect of your colleagues and your clients comes from from understanding what it is, you know. Um, and to put yourself out there at, at such a lowball, disregarding rate I, I think it's insulting that's just me and you know what if somebody gets mad and doesn't want to talk to me it's fine so you're just saying basically do. value yourself yes yeah, don't please give it up. please just value, value yourself, yourself. Mm-hmm. and it's even funny and i'm and again i'm a little more controversy because that's what fun stuff is i find it a little <laughs> strange when voice talent get online and want to look for free music want to uh-huh. look for free sound effects oh uh-huh you know? yeah um, doesn't it does isn't it the same on both sides i mean the how about True. the music the musician saying hey i got a great backing track who's going to do a voiceover for me for free or i'm a voiceover i need a, a free music track i just signed up yesterday i signed a two-year contract with a holy cow and i'm not going to mention the name with the most outrageous production music library i've ever heard and uh I did it the right way. I said, two-year contract. I know exactly what I can use. I know uh, exactly what legally, uh, how I can uh, use every uh, opportunity that I have with this library. And But the neat thing, and here's what's really neat and what sold me on it. I know we're getting a little off topic. But um, every any demo that I do, if, if the contract expires two years later, Every demo, I don't have to go back and replace any of the music as long as it stays within the existing production. And the only change that I mm. would do would be an edit for time. Mm-hmm. But back in the old days, cool. if I if my license runs out, I'd have to recall every demo. I didn't say, hey, we got to change your music because I'm not licensing it anymore. So this is in wow. the contract. So yes, so I'm very happy about that. But you know That's what? That's great to um, We choose who we work with. We choose how we work. That's fine. You know, do do whatever you want. Um, however, I'm just saying that if you want the respect of the industry, respect the industry. There's the facts. Yeah. Cliff, I've, as you know, I've produced and I, ever since, you know, that was part of my income when I left radio uh, back in 2004 and five. And I immediately signed up with a music licensing company uh, right there in uh, Dallas, actually, mm-hmm. where you are. And. To me, you know, it's so much worth it, and I renew. I just, you know, renew, renewed mine in November for you know another three years, and it's the same type deal. You know exactly what you can use. You know how long you can use it, and everything is above board. I had a guy that I I won't even call him a friend, but a guy that I knew way back in the day who was producing some stuff. And he was wanting to borrow, quote unquote, some music from me. Uh-uh. And I'm like, dude, you know, that's just not how it works. You know, uh-uh. you can't just borrow music from me. And he called me back later on. He goes, you know, Kev, I went on to blank, blank website and auditioned and previewed some of their music. And I just happened to accidentally hit the record button and whoops, I had the track. And I'm like, dude, you're a clown. You just, I wow. mean, that's, that's being a thief. Really? Yeah, so, they probably posted an eight-bit mono version. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's, you know, they dumb that stuff down so you can hear it quickly. You know, they don't they don't want to load a hundred and eighty meg, you know, three and a half minute music bit. Yeah, yeah you know, I exactly. want to sleep well at night. I don't want anybody knocking on my door. And when I uh, when I work with my people, I don't want to have to come back and say, "Oh, you know what? No, 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 it it, it doesn't work that way." <laughs> This library is so good. It's all acoustic. And that's another thing about production. Um, You know, we tolerated the trans urban house stuff back in 2015. The And that was like everything. I'm really hearing and, and helping too, bringing back acoustic instruments. And it just sounds so much better. 
and a lot of the modern production that I'm hearing and as well as modern production that I'm doing is is including real music beds, not synth loops. And that makes a much better demo too as well, you know. Absolutely. Um, you know, the the dollar ninety five, you know, downloads are, you know, just four bar loop that doesn't really doesn't really get me too uh excited <laughs> cliff we're going to let you go here in just a second but i wanted to uh ask you a couple of questions and these questions are probably more important than any other question that we've asked so far are Uh-oh. you ready yes sir who is your favorite rock band of all time oh there's no doubt i mean if you know me there's there's absolutely no doubt i want to... everybody else to know it would have to be Genesis. No Doubt is your favorite rock no, band? I like No Doubt, but it would have to be Genesis. <laughs> nice. Oh, And yeah. you ask me... That's what... You ask me on the day of Peter Gabriel's birthday. Yes. I saw that post. He is awesome. You're right. The, the, oh. from, from the first album I heard that was panned and I think maybe sold 600 copies... Uh, once he broke away from Genesis after Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, uh, I thought Genesis was great for the next couple albums, Trick of the Tail, uh, Wind and Weathering, but then they really started to get away from it, and Peter Gabriel stayed true to himself, you know, as a musician, as a as an artist, as just a human being, you know, just unbelievable stuff. They were doing five guys on stage in 1973. What they could produce was unbelievable unbelievable yeah so it's definitely peter gabriel very important question kevin thank you (laughs) all right and i'm gonna follow that up with i need three i need the top three starting with three two and then tell us okay your top rock guitarist of all time go three two one Mm, top rock you do that sure sure um number three number three (laughs) would probably be Joe Walsh. Wow, really? Yeah. Near, okay. Near, 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 near. Oh, because <laughs> there is nothing like Joe Walsh. Um, I would put, and, and certainly way down the list, but I, I think uh, Neil Young's up there too. Because I mean, I like parts guitar players. Okay, number two, Martin Barr from Jethro Tull. Wow. These some deep dives here. Number one favorite guitar player of all time would probably be Steve Howe from Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. Not what I, I expected, expected at all. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Steve Vai, amazing. Uh-huh. Um, Eric Johnson, amazing. Satriani, amazing. But these guys are machines. You know, they're technically flawless. Steve Howe was sloppy all over the place. But, man, he played stuff that, that you got to have 12 fingers to play. <laughs> uh, Martin Barr out of Jethro Tull is that he was so important in that band and did things that nobody ever heard that were just unbelievable. And uh, again, Joe Walsh because I think he's cute. I like Joe Walsh. <laughs> I'd like to have a beer with Joe Walsh. You, you would too, oh, Kevin, wouldn't? and so would you, oh, Bobby. I certainly would. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm surprised I didn't hear some of the names that you know are stereo, stereotypically in this conversation: Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, but you did mention Vi and Satriani. I kind of expected those in there, but I do love the deep dives um, because Cliff is obviously more of an aficionado than I am in that realm, and I love those names that you pulled out for. Actually, us. you know what? I'm going to move Joe Walsh to number four, mm-hmm. and Uh-oh. I'm going to put Al Dimiola at number three. <laughs> Okay. And who's that? Uh, um, Al Diniola from Return to Forever, played with Chick Corea. Um, okay. Great band. Uh, refer- uh, Romantic Warrior uh, by a band called uh, Return to Forever. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, he's great. He's an unbelievable guitar player. Cool. Do you have anything else? No, I'm really looking forward to VO Atlanta. I want it to come tomorrow. <laughs> My wife would say, stop whining, Cliff. It'll be here before you know it. We're going to have so much fun. Probably one of my favorite sessions ever. I mean, I, I took mm, it at, thank you. at VO Atlanta, your ex session, and then we had the pleasure of doing it in Normandy again. So, mm, worth was, every penny, worth five times the money. It oh, is such so much a fun. Good... And I think the Friday, our second session, is the last event of the evening. So, we can go late. Woohoo! Ooh. 
another one of Cliffy's secret se- midnight secret sessions. Amazing. All the FAFCON people out there know all about that stuff. <laughs> And Cliff, if anybody wants to reach out to you for demo production, what's the best way? Well, the website is a-mazingdemos.com. And my 24-7 email address is C, as in Cliff, zelman10 at gmail.com. And I love my Gmail. Well, you guys think that Gmail is starting to get a little more respect, Gmail addresses? Because, you know, three, four years ago, if somebody had a Gmail address, it was like, ah, this guy's a hack. I hope so, Yeah. Yeah, that's been my most reliable email. I, mm-hmm. I pretty much me too, and it integrates with everything with yeah. my CRM. Right. It comes up on everything. It's always there. They don't filter anything. Yeah, I love it. All right, kitties. So excellent work, Cliff, and we look forward to seeing you in just a handful of weeks at yeah, to be Atlanta. Yeah, in Atlanta. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I hope the weather's good. <laughs> well, we'll be inside. The It'll whole be great. Time. <laughs> All right, guys, look me up. Thanks, They'll Cliff. know where to find me. Thank you so much, and best of luck to both of you guys. I'll be talking to you soon. See ya. So great to have Cliff on the Middle Class VO podcast. As you can tell, Cliff is a bundle of energy, and that is exactly <laughs> yes. what you're going to get at VoiceOver Atlanta. I'm surprised he doesn't have his own podcast, you know, as much as he likes to talk. <laughs> Well, you know what? He's got he's got his hands in so much stuff uh, in our world, you know, in the voiceover world. So he may not have time for a podcast, but it was certainly nice to get him on the Middle Class VO podcast today. And uh, looking forward to uh, working with Cliff at VO Atlanta. Speaking of VO Atlanta, here coming up on the Middle Class VO podcast, we're going to be talking about the big conference at the end of March in Atlanta. And if you don't have plans to go, what you could be missing. It's a big year there. Yeah. And, you know, the Middle Class VO podcast will be represented by Bobby and myself. And you have an opportunity to win some swag. 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 (laughs) More details on that as uh, it gets nearer. And uh, thanks for joining us today in the Middle Class VO podcast. See you next time. Bye. The Middle Class VO Podcast is a K2 Media Productions production. All views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests. The McVob Jingle was written and produced by Kevin. Co-produced and performed by Chloe Dolandis. Additional engineering by Zach Zimmett. Bobby's Hair and Makeup by Rebecca Adlita. Kevin's Wardrobe by Slippery Pete's Fashion Emporium. All previous episodes are available for download on Podbean. For the Middle Class VO Podcast, I'm Tracy Thibodeau. I'm Lisa Lou Perry. Thanks for listening. And don't miss the next episode of The Middle Class VO Podcast. The Middle Class VO Podcast. Swag. Swag. The word swag is actually an acronym for stuff we all get. It originated from the dot-com years, where companies use these giveaway items as promotional mechanisms. Another meaning is an acronym for scientific wild-ass guess. Another meaning in the pirate days, swag was a term for pirate booty or treasure. Swag. Swag. You said booty. (laughs) Booty. (laughs) 